Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. We appreciate your viewership. Let's get started with our weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning, Drew Pollard and hardworking crew taking care of our everyday comfort needs. Comfortable today, 85, low 70. Now the water temperature at the end of the pier is hanging in there at 80. It's been, I was looking at a chart out of past, uh, well, about the past month. It's hung in there right around 80. So, you know, it, then it jumped up to 82, like three days and went back down to 80. So I get, you know, all these little things are important, <laughs> okay? Uh, this, we didn't get to do our Monday moon forecast, so we're going to do our Tuesday moon phases because it's so important this time of the year. We're talking about fly fishing and mayfly hatch. The full moon is going to be this Friday. Now, that's going to be June, so it's, we can't call it a full moon of May, but it's close enough that this is these next couple of days are going to be super fishing. I can promise you, if you go fishing today, tomorrow, and Thursday, it's going to be great. Uh, everything else... Uh, it's just uh, this time of the year. It's one of the best times of the whole year for freshwater brim fishing. Okay, keep that in mind. Our tide chart, and that's brought to us by Panama City Coca-Cola. We appreciate their sponsorship. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. We're looking at uh, neap tides. <laughs> we, last week we had some really strong tides. We're in some neap tides. And, of course, the thing about neap tides, they're only going to last a couple of days, and we're going to have some good tides coming up this weekend. And our wind now is going to be coming out of south southwest at about eight. Let's take a break. We'll be right back with our guest. Okay, welcome back and welcome Officer Nicole Bassford. Thank welcome you. back. Thank you. We're Thank so you. glad to have you. I was telling her I'm finally glad to get the prettier half of the Bassford family <laughs> back on the show. <laughs> Travis, uh, he's taking care of the kids this morning. and, and He's and taking them to school, yeah, huh? and then he's got to go to work. Well, we're so glad to have you, and uh, we have so much to talk about. Yes, sir. And uh, so, uh, you know, last week was safe boating week, uh, start, kicked off the boating season, and mm -hmm. yesterday, Memorial Day, kicks off the summer. Yep. So we had a Coast Guard last week, and I thought it would be really good to bring FWC in. And who's better to talk about <laughs> the boating safety than Nicole, because Officer, Officer Nicole Bassford. I, I, I want to call him Mr. Cole, but Officer <laughs> Nicole Bassford. So, you can call me whatever you want. Okay. It's fine. All right. I'm so glad. <laughs> She's been on before. I know y'all remember seeing her. It's been a while. Okay. It has. Too I long. think, yeah, I think it was before we had kids. Did it, wasn't uh, it? Don't say that. I think so. No, it it's was. When we did the, yeah, it's and, when we did the Got You Talk You. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that have, was it. We still have that. And now your two kids, what, what age were they? Uh, Bella's about to be seven, and then Wyatt's four. Four and a half. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, it's been yeah, a while. It's been seven years. <laughs> yeah. We can't do that anymore. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's, let's get started. Go ahead. Yeah, so like you said, last week was uh, National Safe Boating Week. Um, we're going to touch a little bit again on that, only because Memorial Day weekend did kick off our summer season. Um, and with that, we just want to make sure that people are staying safe on the water and, and having all the safety equipment that they need to have on the boat. So, yeah. Um, some, so some of the points that we want to talk about is, uh, well, you know, people in, especially here in the Panhandle, they've been in the woods, you know, in, in the fall and the winter and the spring. So people haven't been getting on the water. They're just now getting on the water. Uh, we want to make sure that they're doing it safely. You know, get that boat before you get it on the water. Get on the boat. Check your safety gear. Make sure it's still working. Make sure that it hasn't expired. Some of the safety equipment has mm -hmm. expiration dates. Um, and then just give you some tips on how to stay safe on the water, you know, once you're actually on the water. So, And, you know, our... Our young people they need to take the safe boating class too. Right. Yep. That's definitely one of um, the points that I want to talk about. Um, yeah. It's an easy course. Um, we do. Th there's some companies that offer it for free. Um, if you go on myfwc.com and on the search bar, you type mm -hmm. boater ID course. The first link, you click it, and it gives you actually all the different companies that offer it. Um, some are online. Some are in the classroom. But um, for anybody that was born after January 1st of 1988, it's actually mandatory for you to have it. Mm -hmm. um, we recommend that everybody gets it, you know. That's true. Um, that way everybody's safe. We have a pretty significant statistic. Um, according to FWC boating accident statistics, 70% of operators involved in fatal boating accidents in 2022 did not have any formal boater education. Oh, um, and I think it's safe wow. to say that a lot of the people 
you know, getting on, on these boats are older than it, people that were born in 1988. Yeah. I, I know we do have a lot of young people on, on, on boats too, but um, even, you know, the older population, mm -hmm. it's just, it's very important that we all take these courses. We have to do it as, as officers before we, yeah. we get on the field. So we just suggest that everybody goes ahead and takes that course and just get familiarized yeah. with, you know, with the safety rules and navigational rules. I know you're out there on a regular basis, all of y'all are, mm -hmm. on the water, and, and you see some some crazy stuff, I guess. We do. Uh, uh, it's unfortunate, some of the stuff that we see, some of the fatalities. I mean, in, in 2022 alone, uh, Bay County had 18 reportable boating accidents with one fatality and nine injuries. We were ranked number 12 in for, for counties in the state. Um, and mm -hmm. then... Florida, unfortunately, always comes out on top, number I one know. in boating accidents. So, know. Um, you know, we lead the nation with over one million registered mm -hmm. vessels um, across the state. So it's just, it's extremely important that we stay safe out there. I, I know, and we're talking about, you know, we're number 12 out of 67 counties, but my goodness, uh, we're a small county compared to all those counties. Down Absolutely, south. compared to Miami and, yeah. and, and per Florida, capita, yeah. we'd probably be one of the top two or three easily. Correct. Okay, yeah. Correct. And, yeah. you know, we always want to be number one, but this is we're definitely yeah. a statistic that we don't need to be number one on. We won't be um, number one on the big fish and all. Yeah. But and, all this. and this year alone in the northwest region, so that's, you know, mm -hmm. um, Pensacola to Tallahassee, basically, um, we've already had 10 fatalities. Well, how many? 10. 10? Yeah. And summer's in just getting started. Florida? Northwest Florida. And oh. summer's just getting started. Well, we so. just getting started with safe boating. I yep. mean, last week. Last week. Wow. So, um, and it's been, I'd I, I read some some of the details on some of them, it's been a lot of times just speed and negligence and right. just crazy it's stuff. completely avoidable stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, and, and that also leads us to um, life jackets, you know. Um, obviously by law, anybody who's under six on mm -hmm. a vessel that's under 26 has to have a life jacket. Um, but again, just like with the voter ID card, even though it's not required by law, we suggest that people wear it at all times. Not at all times, but as long as the, the boat is moving. Boat is moving. Uh, when the boat is underway, just yeah. make sure you have a life jacket. We have to wear one when we're working. Mm -hmm. um, the type of life jacket that we wear is a Type 5, um, mm -hmm. and it's the one that's almost, you know, it just hangs here. It's I should have brought it in so you guys could see it. Um, but they sell it at any, like mm -hmm. Walmart, um, West Marine, mm -hmm. Amazon, online, anywhere you can get it. Um, it's it's small, it's lightweight, it mm -hmm. doesn't choke you out like that typical, you know, orange wow. life jacket that everybody has on the boat. Mm -hmm. um, just get you one of those, keep it on while the boat is moving. You don't even know that you're wearing it. Um, so, because 60, 64% of the accidents um, where death was involved, the people were not wearing a life jacket. Wow. So wow. again, a completely avoidable uh, situation. Oh, yeah. um, people think that, you know, the rule says that they gotta be readily accessible, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But what happens when you get into a boating accident and you hit your head and you go in the water? That's true. You That's know. true. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back with Officer Nicole Basford. Okay, welcome back. Sitting here with Officer Travis Basford's Nicole. wife, oh. <laughs> Nicole Basford, and I've been trying to... Uh, I didn't know it's been seven years since you've been on. And we yeah. had such a great time last time. We, we said, we've got to do this more often. So we, we do have to do it more often. Hey, let's talk. We've got a couple of pictures now. This is award-winning officer, Nicole Bashford, because here, here we go. Let's check out this. Tell us about this award. Uh, that is the Operation Dry Water National Boating Officer of the Year. Wow. So what did you do to, to win this award? Um, so that's given out by NASBLA, which is, um, I want to get this right, National Association of Safe Boating uh, Law Administrators. And they recognize me for, like I said, the National, or, um, Nas National Boating Officer of the Year. So basically just my efforts in BUI detection and enforcement, yeah. um, my efforts in teaching BUI, because I, I am a NASBLA instructor, so I teach um, other agencies, I, I teach our own agencies, uh, awesome. agency as well. Um, so just just for my efforts and, and my stats on BUI yeah. enforcement. I've congratulated. Uh, Thank you. Uh, we had a picture on before, but y'all went over to Massachusetts to see what New Michigan? Hampshire. We went New to New Hampshire. Hampshire. Yeah, they, they, that's where the conference was. Yeah. They, every year they hold a conference to, to and receive they receive awards. Yeah, they give awards to different people, and yeah, that's where we Good went. Good deal. Okay, the second picture, let's take a look at it. Uh, what do we have here now? 
Uh, that is a MAD award. So MAD is Mothers Against Drunk Drivers, and uh, they just recognize the top three officers of every agency in the Northwest region. Um, so that is uh, from left to right, that's Lieutenant um, Bartlett with Officer Pritchard, and then Officer Oliver, myself, Lieutenant John Allen, which is, he's the lieutenant here in Bay County that's over the task force, and Lieutenant Jared Molnar. So us three in the middle are the ones who won. We were the top three BUI um, officers that's, for the Northwest region. That's great. I, was, yeah. I, I asked the picture of a rose between a bunch of thorns right there, but that's a great <laughs> picture. So we were talking about mothers against drunk drivers, mm -hmm. and if you knew the history of it, how it started, and, and we'll talk about that. But we also have a, a problem. I'm so proud of you doing that because we, we all feel the same way, so it just takes effort to do that. Yeah, it's BUIs are definitely a passion of mine. It, it started back... Um, when I started with the agency, my mm -hmm. FTO, which is a field training officer, he was very passionate about BUI. So it kind of started down down in South Florida with him. And then once I came up here, you know, once I got my footing and learned the area, I started focusing, you know, on BUIs. And it's it's my baby. I, mean, I it's, know, I know. I've talked to Travis before. He talks about how passionate you are yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I mean, we're all appreciative of that because that's what it takes. We just cannot, right. we just cannot allow that. Right. Uh, we have a we have a BUI task force here in, in yeah. the area. Um, it's really the captain's area, so it includes Gulf County. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have just specific officers who have taken, you know, extra steps to be uh, trained in BUI enforcement. And we're basically just out there every single weekend, especially in the summer, yeah. um, targeting BUIs and um, just making sure everybody's safe on the water. Because mm -hmm. You know, one person off the water who's impaired, you know, can mean oh. saving somebody's life. So it's it's extremely important. We've seen the effects of it. We've seen you know the consequences and and the damages that that it, it creates. Yeah. So it's a big problem. <laughs> we yeah. had over 25 BUIs in the summer alone. That's four months in Bay County last year. How many? 25. And that's that's a small that doesn't, area. That 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 doesn't even no. It's not that it's a small area. It's it's, it's only maybe two boats targeting BUIs with hundreds of boats on Shell Island. Oh my goodness. So that's only the people that we got to. I you I can guarantee you that there's way yeah. more that got away with it. Yeah. Um so it, it's a problem and, and we're here, you know, we're out there every weekend enforcing it and make sure making sure that people are staying safe. If you know a BUI is just like a DUI yeah. on the water. Um, if you plan on going out on the water and you want to have a few drinks, have at it. Have a designated driver, you it, know, just like you would on, on the road. Let me insert this. I've been here my whole life and all, but this drinking and boating and all, when you go out on the water, you go out and enjoy it, you can enjoy it without alcohol. Absolutely. It's as simple as that. And I, I watched it develop. It started over here at Crab Island a long time oh, ago. Gosh. They started partying over here at Crab Island mm -hmm. and drinking all. I'm thinking, why are these people out there fishing and riding around in boats? And they were just sitting there drinking. And it's so beautiful. Uh -huh. Crab Island is so beautiful. Yes. And instead of enjoying the natural beauty and enjoying the water, people are drinking. We just came exactly. from Crab Island. So they just had Billy Bowlegs over there. I don't know if you're familiar with Billy yes. Bowlegs. Um, which is just right next door in Fort Walton. Um, but between Crab Island and Fort Walton Beach, um, we just worked it last weekend. And it's gone down because of the police presence that we have at yeah. Billy Bowlegs. We've been enforcing it so strongly for so many years now that it actually keeps going down. But even with a diminished crowd, we had eight, B eight or nine BUIs. We had two fatalities and one serious injury. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. In one day. And then, and then what happened? You know, one, how many days? In one day. This is, that was just one day. In one day. So Eight that's to nine crazy. BUIs, one fatality, two fatalities, and one injury. And it started just like this. There's a few boats out there drinking, and all of a sudden, boom. Yes. And what has happened, it spread out to Shell Island, because they oh, never yeah. did that at Shell Island, never. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, a few boats started, and then all of a sudden, boom, the yes, same thing. Yes, it's hundreds of boats. And it's a lot harder for us, because Shell Island, you know, Crab Island is just like this, you yeah. know, and the boats are just in a circle and you really can just circle them around yeah. them like sharks. But Shell Island is so long yeah. and they're all spread out and they got three different ways that they can go. Uh -huh. So it makes it harder for us to, you know, catch those people who are yeah. um, under the influence. But mm -hmm. we're still out there. We're still doing it. 
we're passionate about it, oh. and we just want to, you know, advise. I get fired up right here in the morning thinking and about I, it, so I know <laughs> it. I, I, it just burns me up, and all. And, uh, and I worry about Crooked Island sounds, and uh, you know, it's just going to spread on down like dominoes. Right. And then, uh, uh, Cape San Blas, the peninsula there. Mm -hmm. So far, I've I, I watched those people. These are families out there, like originally started families yeah. walking in. So we had had it spread down there. Y'all, please keep it away from that area there. Yes. I got to take a break. I got to calm down. Let's take a break. <laughs> we'll, we'll go right back. Okay, welcome back, FWC Officer Nicole Bassford with us this morning. We're just having a great time here. Let's take a look at our fishing game time first, brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. Our time this morning, 7.18 to 9.18. This evening, 7.38 to 9.38. We've got a lot more to go, but we've got to get it finished, but we do want to want to wrap up about the drunk drunk boaters and all. <laughs> you, just, you, you just don't do it, folks. And I, it's, it's, it's we're both passionate about it, and I, I think I've told you before, I, I'm passionate because I, I lost my only brother to, to a drunk driver in a, a long time. If you've seen the hurt in my mom and dad's face, they never got over it. And I've had a passion against fighting against it. And then we see someone like you that's really enforcing it, getting these awards for enforcing it. I have a deep appreciation of that. I just want you to know. Appreciate it. And, and you, you've been run into by a, a drunk driver. And it's, it's, yes, it's I, I was, I was uh, t bone a long, long time ago, actually on my way to um, the physical test for our agency. When I first applied for our agency, I, I was t bone by a drunk yeah. driver. No injuries, thank God, but yeah. you know. Yeah. And that's the thing, you just gotta make it personal, whether you know somebody that's been hit by a drunk driver or affected by a drunk driver, or mm -hmm. even if, it, if you haven't, make it personal and, and you'll find that fire to yeah, get you. Yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> to get you Okay, we gotta move on, you got a couple other things to get finished. Yeah, we wanna talk about the diver down flag. Um, Again, you know, with summer here, we have a lot of people in the water, whether it's snorkeling or, or diving. Um, divers and snorkelers, if you have a mask and snorkel, you have to have a, a dive flag. If you're gonna keep the dive flag on the boat, make sure it's the big one that's 20 by 24. And if you're gonna have the one that you tow around that floats in the water, that's a, that has to be a 12 by 12. Um, you have to stay within 300 feet of your dive flag. As a diver, as a swimmer, you have to stay within 300 feet if you're in open water. Um, if you're in an inlet or a narrow channel, is within 100 feet. And that goes the same for boats. Mm -hmm. So divers and swimmers, you have to stay 300 feet away or within 300 feet from your dive flag. Boaters, you have to stay away mm -hmm. 300 feet away from the dive flag. Now, if you, for whatever reason, cannot stay away um, 100 feet or 300 feet, depending where you are, then you have to come down to idle speed. Okay. Okay. And then that brings us over to the move over law, um, which every, I think most people are familiar with the move over law mm -hmm. on, on the road, right? You see a trooper or a deputy pulled over, has somebody pulled over, they got their blue lights on, you know, you know that you have to move on to the next uh, mm -hmm. lane. If you cannot, you have to reduce your speed. Well, it's the same thing on the water. This is a new thing that we've been implementing now for, I think, one or two years. Um, it's the same thing. If you see one of us, mm -hmm. you know, we have a, a, a vessel stopped and we have our blue lights on, you have to stay away 300 feet. If you cannot be 300 feet, then you gotta come down to idle speed. Mm -hmm. um, not only can your weight cause damage to our vessels, um, but it can, it's also for the safety of the people. We might be conducting SFSDs, you mm -hmm. know, on somebody that we think might be impaired and um, that kind of throws everything off and mm -hmm. we get a big wake. We kind of have to stop the SFSDs, let the weight go down, you know, go yeah. by and then get restarted again. It's yeah, just, I thought about that. that yeah. yeah, it's not a good situation anywhere, you know, any way you look at it, you just got to slow down, you know, careful, you're responsible for your wake, if it causes damage or injury. So just if you see us out there with our lights on, whether it's us or Coast Guard, whoever it is, if they have blue lights, just make sure you stay 300 feet away. And if you cannot, then you got to bring it down to idle speed. Mm -hmm. And speaking of a, of a crowd coming up, we have scallop season coming up later in the right. season, and that's when that's really when we get congested. Yep. And um, one another thing that we talk about is just being being aware of your surroundings. Yeah. You know, it's the water is a very fluid environment. You know, when we're on the road, I always make this analogy, so, you know, so people can understand. When when you're on the road, you have lane dividers, you have stop lights, you have stop signs, you have turning signals, all these things that indicate what mm -hmm. you're doing, what you're supposed to do. We don't have that on the water, okay? You don't have people swimming on the roads. I mean, you do got people crossing, but if you're on the turnpike or I-10, you're not gonna have somebody crossing. Yeah. It's not like that on the water. People are swimming, people are diving, people are wakeboarding, mm -hmm. scalloping, whatever yeah. it is. 
this. There's a lot going on when you're on the water. So just keep your head on a swivel. Make sure that you're aware of your surroundings mm -hmm. and, and have a proper lookout. Listen, if you have more than That's one person point. on the boat, designate somebody to keep an eye, mm -hmm. like keep an eye out. You're focused on driving, you're focused on what's in front of you. Have somebody looking around. If you're about to slow down, take a peek behind you, make sure there's not a boat behind you. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do yeah. to, to make sure that you're aware of your surroundings. And you know, a lot of times we're talking about also a lot of saltwater based stuff on the big river system and all we right. gotta be looking at look at. We always had our yeah. daddy had us up in front of the boat looking for logs. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. And I remember that. So Absolutely. You gotta, you gotta be looking at it all times and I know uh, you're talking about taking life jackets off. You get up on a sandbar, that's when you take the life jackets right. off, but you just keep it on on the river and all. On the river, especially, yeah. yeah, we have, like you said, you know, there's a lot of logs, and most of the accidents that we we get on the rivers are because people hit logs. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. I, I, I yeah. could guess that, too. Yeah. Okay, we've got about a minute or so left. We've, got, we've covered most of your notes. you got a lot of stuff there. I do. <laughs> um, just want to remind everybody about myfwc.com, you know, to get the boater safety course. Um, on the search bar, you can type voter ID course, and it's going to be the first link. Mm -hmm. It gives you the different options. So again, go to myfwc.com and, and find that voter ID course if you don't have it. Just have all your life jackets. Remember, under six and under 26. Awesome, awesome. Well, listen, uh, one of the things that you got to tell uh, Travis that we got to make sure you come on more often and not <laughs> wait ever six or seven years. That's right. I could do, I mean, we could do that with Travis, but, but no. I, I, <laughs> His case of the month is some of the hits of the month. I mean, everybody yeah. loves talk, yeah. talking about those and all. Do you, okay, uh, with that minute left, real quick, what's the best advice you can give people operating a boat? Be sober, be aware of your surroundings, and have a life jacket on. Be sober, aware of your surroundings, and that's why you say, that's why you got to. Yeah, keep your head on a swivel. swivel. You that's, have to. That's There's a lot is. going on. There is. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, and thank And I, I know you got busy with the kids now. Y'all, y'all are. Are you coaching some? And we all? are. We are. We're coaching. We both coach um, and I, baseball. That's, that's awesome. I coach Wyatt, and and Travis is coaching Bella. Oh, that's yeah. great. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right, folks. We appreciate you watching our show. You do something good for someone else today. Enjoy our great outdoors. Take care of it. You have a great day, and God bless. <laughs> Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.